Hello, welcome to Board Game Replay. We are a week and a half or so back from Gen Con. We wanted to give a bit of a recap of some of the games we play there, some of the events, uh, some of the craziness. You can see like the silly stacks of games we have on the side here. This is just about everything we brought back with us. Probably the uh, the year we brought the most back with us, I think, ever. It's true. Yeah, I think, uh, Brian, this is like the first time you actually bought something, right? It is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bought a bunch of games, and I actually have some on uh, pre-order. Yeah. Yes. Ordering, so they're uh, not even yeah. in yet. Well, we got to get to that. That was like one of our first days there. I will also say about this, like the fact that we're doing this video a week and a half after Gen Con, I've never been so exhausted than this one. No question in my mind. Like, I have, was so tired coming home. I also had like partial pneumonia or something because i was coughing like crazy the whole time we <laughs> yeah you noticed yeah. <laughs> we, we were uh, there but it i think it actually took me like three or four days when i came back to get back in the swing of like yeah. sleeping and being a person again it yeah. was it was hard i think I, maybe just we stayed up so late playing games every day well, we were out every day the, yeah. the heat was there we, um, we were out sleep. walking around constantly <laughs> we didn't pay to sleep i like that that's true yeah yeah, but it was a particularly exhausting Gen Con. We did probably more gaming than we've ever done at this time. I think we made a point of it this time. Um, I, sadly, our buddy Jim lives in New York. Otherwise, he'd be here with us. Uh, he was awesome to see again and play. We saw our friends Shane and Ishan. We did a video about Root with them. And we saw a ton of our friends there. And uh, we played a lot of games in the hotel. We were in the Omni, so we just played. <laughs> Most of our gaming sessions were in the, the lobby. At the, the lobby, lobby the conference room. I think after five years of going, this was our fifth year? Fifth year, Fifth yeah. or sixth? Fifth. Fifth. fifth year, so I mean, fifth, we, fifth year. Fifth year. We, fifth, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think at this point we know the show floor. We know what booths like we need to hit, and then we know where to wander towards to like sure. find the cool things that we wouldn't have necessarily yeah. noticed. Yeah, yeah. We got to pick that up before it sells out, or you know, we know they're going to have something new and new, uh, something fun. But we had a we had a plan at least for the first day. Like we had, a, we had, we, did. we, went we had meetings planned. We did. Yeah, we had meetings planned. Well, we went the, the day before, or a couple days before, we had that sit down where we talked about, hey, these are like the big games we want to go see, and then at least you know when we got there that night before Gen Con opened, yeah. we had decided, hey, the next day we we you had a couple demos already set up, yeah, you know in the morning afternoon, and we had some others were like, let's go and stop by, and we want to demo these. And I know that the first day we had like back to back demos. We got a lot. Yeah, of Yeah, first out. we started off with, with a uh, lot. We started off with uh, the Brain Games, and uh, we picked up Ice Cool 2, which I'm excited to play because mm -hmm. we, we like playing Ice Cool 1. Yeah. Ice Cool 2, I've read the rules too. We haven't had a chance to play it yet, but it allows you to connect both copies of it and make these huge boards that you can have these yeah. crazy games in. There's also some other like kind of twists on the rules and stuff, so we're excited about that. We also kind of surprisingly picked up uh, uh, Pococo. Yeah. Which is great. That was a I like really it. good trick-taking game. Yeah. Uh, super colorful, like really interesting twist on trick-taking. 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 I've said yeah. that before. Trick-taking. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was like my first trick-taking Ted game, and it was, yeah, it was man. really fun to get into. We did a little video for that, too. You can see a link to that in the description or up here, too. It's a trick-taking game, but you don't see your own cards, kind of like uh, uh, Hanabi style, where you have them facing backwards, and uh, there's a whole sort of drafting system where you, or betting system where you bet on who's going to get the most who's going to be able to take the most tricks. And uh, it's a, anyway, you can watch our video. It's really interesting. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, oh Orc Olympics. Orc Olympics. Yeah, that was the other one. There was like yeah. this quick one. And the, the yeah. guy at the booth had mentioned, he's like, this is one of like our favorite like quick inter-office card games that yeah. we love to play. And we're like, sure, yeah, let's check it out. So uh, I'm pretty sure I can't lose at that game. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm actually certain <laughs> one, I cannot what, lose at that game. How would you describe Orc Olympics? It's, a, it's initially a drafting game, right? Because you draft yeah, the different strengths of cards to then bid on... Well, I'm saying bid, but what is the theme? You're the you're explaining Olympics. the rules, but yeah. uh, let's understand this. I win at a game, which is a very important. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's all that matters. That's, that's really that's all that matters. Game. That is the game that it's Isaac an gets to win. Style game. There's competitions. You play the higher number, and yeah. it's yeah, yeah. it's very basic, but it's 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 got a, a few strategic mechanics to try and compete. And it's right. pretty fun. Right, right, but Isaac won 100 percent of the games, which <laughs> me and Jeremy were both in. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So we probably cheated. Yeah. probably cheated. <laughs> well, the, the the main mechanic in that one was like you you draft a set of cards that you're going to use. So it's like you get to see the was it five or six it's, events. I think it might change based on players. Sure. But, yeah. but there's a certain number of events on the table with a certain score. Like this is worth this is worth X amount of points. In the second place is worth X points. And so you have to like go through and draft cards as you take one pass, take one pass to try and win these different things by playing cards down in clockwise order until somebody passes and they take stuff back. The interesting part, and I didn't realize it until we were like halfway through our first game, 
But basically, the as you're making bids on stuff, you lose any cards from your hand. Mm -hmm. they, you, they stay on the table. They stay on the table, though. But you lose them from your hand if you if you. So I play three cards to really win this competition that's worth seven victory points. I get that now. But now those three cards are not in my hand. If I don't win a competition, I get to take one back. So those cards are like it's really interesting. Like it's the simplest mechanic, but it makes yeah. it really interesting. Quick little bidding game. Yeah. So you can um, just like give up on a row instead of. Like you don't have to play anything. Yeah, I'm not gonna touch this. And you draw one back. So yeah. It, or even if you like go all in, you go like really hard on something and you lose, you just get your cards back. Yeah. You get them all back or no? No, no, no. Nope. You still yeah. you still keep what you put. That's fine. We'll edit that out. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else did we do that first day? The most I think, simple game that we played. I know, right? That was a really simple game. <laughs> I don't know. So mind. We'll get to that in a minute. But that was. Oh that was yeah, yeah, that's different. Uh, also, we stopped by uh, the Starling Games booth because they had two of the nicest. Prettiest looking games I think I've seen in a long time at a convention. Um, Hands down. It's a weird way to phrase that, I guess. But it was a really beautiful game. First of all, Everdell. Uh, yeah. I've heard good things about it going into it, and it was beautiful. And so, like, they had this... The way they had it set up at the booth, it was beautiful looking. And uh, somebody had said it's like kind of like a Lords of Waterdeep mixed with, like, a lighter terraforming Mars. And I was like, wow, in. Sounds yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, that and along... We did a video for Everdell as well. You can you can check that out, too. Just a quick kind of yeah, afterthought. Yeah, we played that one. That was quick. Yeah. And it was cool. I like that it had like a big 3D tree. It just adds like, it makes you feel more into it and like not just, just playing on a board, right? I'm totally Even though you don't really that. interact with the tree very much at all, but it just made it look cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of area control, getting points and stuff yourself, but you kind of get out of that. You're like, yeah, this is good for me for points, but between, you know, the tree, the the tokens, every single like resource was its own thing. Like wood was little sticks. Yeah. Berries were literally made of rubber. Yeah. The crystal, yeah. the rock was like little hard pieces of plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything was made really well. So like the whole, even if you were doing horrible, you were like, this, this game is still fun. <laughs> I, even taking yeah. your turn is like, all right. Got a I totally like that stuff. I'm, I'm a sucker good. for that. Totally. Yeah, it like, was it's fun. Kinda, like if it's pretty and it's nice looking and the card art's nice, everything was great. I think they did it right. It, personally, it's not my favorite type of game, but just playing it the, the one time that we ended up playing, man, it's fun just just be experience it because it really is. It's an experience because of how tactile everything is and how beautiful the game is. Star of the Games also had Archmage, which I haven't played yet, but it's one that I started reading the rules for uh, just yesterday because I'm excited. But that was another one that's beautiful looking. It has crazy. It looks. It looks really complex, but I've heard it's not crazy complex. It seems like a really interesting kind of territory control game with combo and magic spells. Yeah. Uh, just another, like, really, those guys are putting out some crazy looking, crazy great productions. And from what I hear so far, the games are really quality. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing that one. We'll, we'll cover that one some more, uh, definitely in the future, the Archmage one and more Everdell as well. I'm going to try to play with my wife a little bit and get some two-player games going to that. Sure, that sure. would be a good yeah. one to play. You know, we're actually talking about the first day of Gen Con, but we didn't talk about what we did on the day leading up to Gen Con, which was uh, we Wednesday, first, we Wednesday when we flew in. We kind of skipped that entire day, so we're going in a strange order here. But we came in, and we went to Maxine's Chicken and Waffles. It was like one of the first right. stops because everybody said it was amazing, <laughs> and it was. Well, it was. It was really good. Chicken yep. and waffles and sweet tea. I think I still feel it. When you walk in and they ask if you want sweet tea, that's the place for me. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, like, all of us ordered the same thing oh. yeah. all the way around the table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. I went back there a second time a couple days later, actually. I went back, did you? <laughs> I went back uh, there with running those guys. Did you bring him back for us? I didn't. I should have, though. That was great. So one of our first stops of actual gaming was to go to one of the hotels where they had Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions. I had kind of, on the plane ride down and like the days and weeks leading up to it, we were all playing Lightseekers uh, on our phones yeah. and playing the actual physical card game and stuff. And so I knew about Warhammer Champions coming out. I, it seemed like a more complex version of Lightseekers, like a little bit more crunchy. And so I knew that's where we were going to be interested in going. theme we're more familiar with, too. Right, so. yeah. I mean, killing stuff and having giant champions and crazy Well, it's being the Warhammer. The Lightseekers is its own universe. It's right? totally different IP, yeah. That's true. Yeah, so, yeah. like, Warhammer is something we've already heard of. So, yeah. so we went to a demo of that, and uh, we all got to sit down and play. Um, that was really fun. We kind of just, we got to be taught the game. What's really nice about that environment is you get to kind of sit down with a whole group of people that are all playing the same game. Yeah, I like that. So you, like... We turned around to the people that were playing behind us. Hey, did you catch like this or like, am I doing this game. right? Like, is this, am I playing this right? And like everybody was around all at the same time. We're yeah. all playing and all we're trying to like dive into this new game. Um, it was, it was kind of fun. It was a great environment. We, 
uh, like I want to thank the team to like set up that kind of yeah. event, event like that. It's yeah. Play really Fusion. Good. Play Fusion did that as a as a launch to their game, basically to to kind of show it off at the con. It was. Do you a think really it was successful event. at all? Like, right. do you think we liked it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thought, like, two... So it was kind of a it was like your first hits free kind of situation. Yeah, so we right. went in there and everybody left there with a starter deck. So we walked out of there with like five starter decks for. If this is a collectible card game. If you're not familiar with that, I apologize. It's a collectible card game uh, set in the Warhammer universe. It has some interesting kind of card rotation mechanics with champions and heroes and stuff. Uh, and uh, collectible card games are usually one we stray away from. Uh, but the fact that all five of us, or at least four of us, were super into it at the time, we're like, okay, yeah, we should probably get some of this. So we walked out of it with four starter decks, or five starter decks, and uh, we played it, I think, that night with our starter decks. And then, uh, yeah, what happened after that? <laughs> it was like the next day, we were just walking by, we're like, well, if we... If we all pick one of the factions and then we split a box, it's not nearly as much money. So, yep, um, that's what we did. And then yeah. again, and then we, <laughs> and then we, we did that again. Box. So we got several boxes. Yeah. So that was. Uh, I, I really like that though. Like I was telling these guys that I don't want to do collectible card games anymore, where I just jump in by myself. Uh, because like I usually what I'll do is like oh I'll get this game I'll get a box or whatever and they'll say hey guys build a deck with my cards but it's not really that fun because it's not your stuff yeah. And so I was telling you guys, like, oh, if you guys are into it, I'll totally get into it. And yeah. That was what was unique about this year. That and You guys have been out five years, and this is my third year, and we've never done it. Um, that every now and then you've been like, here's a card game, let's play it. We never, don't do that at Gen Con. Yeah. And this time, like, we've, there was, there was a bunch of them. We went into a bunch of different seasons. Even, even if it was just a few starters, there was a whole bunch of ones we did. And, you know, yeah. we're going to try to show you know some of them at least and yeah warhammer was probably the biggest but you and i got into final fantasy we did you, i think you told me about it and i'm like mm, i'm gonna go buy it yeah <laughs> I, I knew the theme was up your alley huge fan of final fantasy like a whole bunch of different games and those yeah they had all the different you could buy the cards directly from those versions and yeah. you know well, yeah. we already we already bought one of those booster boxes and yeah that was bad so like yeah i think well chris this is chris, ccg year. chris needs to jump in here this is ccg year so uh Age of Sigmar Champions on the first day, and then we bought a box the second day, and then bought a second box eventually. Uh, Final Fantasy card game we ended up yep. splitting a box with, and then Chris, what, what else did you, well, get, us, did you got, get us into, uh, I should say? Well, see, what happened was, um, <laughs> he was walking by a yeah, booth. I was walking by a booth, and UFS, which has been around for a while. Which uh, stands for? Universal Fighting System. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. There it is. I didn't want to say it, because I was going to mess it up. I'm going to say the wrong things. It's going to be wrong. <laughs> yeah. And, um... There's a giant Cowboy Bebop banner. I go, yeah, we're going to buy all those. <laughs> so uh, we got all the champions, learned this game. And then once we started learning the um, system, you can take a bunch of different franchises and fight them against each other. So Brian can have his Mortal Kombat characters mm -hmm. and Street Fighter characters and Mortal yeah. Kombat characters. And they also have uh, Mega Man as well as uh, some of their... There's a ton of other ones. But a, yeah. a ton of other ones. But those are kind of the ones that we... We stuck to for now. Yeah. Uh, for now. Good God. Well, yeah. How much more could we get? <laughs> really? like, well, did you look at the cards? There's, so, there's so many. I know. It's really uh, crazy. And it, it's really the the system itself feels great when you're when you're fighting as your chosen person. The uh, your character plays like you would imagine that person would play that card game i suppose yeah, yeah it's it's just like, a it's character versus character yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's reenacting a fighting game so i mean it, it feels like a fighting game like like we when we did the demo i picked goro and right. goro felt like a big slow character that hits really hard right. and that's exactly what it is yeah. and i was playing as spike who has literally half the health pool yeah. of goro <laughs> but i'm way faster so my attacks are harder to block for him and, and you have multiple attacks and yeah Right, but the the game is based around uh, kind of families of m move sets. So a similar character would have you'd be able to build your character using the moves and abilities from similar characters. So yeah. you're you're not stuck to just the uh, Cowboy Bebop universe or the Mega Man yeah. universe. Yeah. You you can pull. Um, Defense cards and attack cards from those universes into your yeah. character. I can put a with. Goro card into one of your Cowboy Bebop decks. Right. Yeah. That's neat. Like it, it's neat. We, when we played the other day at lunch, we played... Uh, well, actually, let me just say this quickly. So, we've been back for a week and a half. I've played the CCGs we brought home like eight times. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Like, 
We've actually brought them to the table. Like, first Thursday back, you were like, you guys want to come over and play card games? We played three games. We played two games of Final Fantasy. Yep. We played a game of Warhammer. Yep. You guys played some of the UFS game. Jeremy and I played it at lunch the other day. I mean, it was... You introduced us to UFS, and then pretty much everybody bought something. Like, I bought Street Fighter. I got yep. Mortal Combat. Like, I literally have a fourth CCG yep. that we bought. We're out the stupid show. But, like, yeah. But because it was, again, it was that thing where I was like, I don't want to buy into a CCG but I have friends to play it with who are also interested in investing to about the same level. Right. So I'm in, right. you know, like I don't want to go and buy every card. I'm not going to collect every card in the set. Cause that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the past, like star Wars destiny and stuff, I would get like that board gamer kind of mindset and be like, well, I got to get all the cards in the set and get two of everything. Oh no, I need four of everything. So my friends can play and have an equal play set. That is that <laughs> down that road lies madness. Well, I think that was kind of also the best part about the Warhammer is you can't since you can't mix the different factions. Yeah, it makes it very easy to just split them up. Right, it's like there's no reason exactly. to have destruction when you're playing a chaos deck. Yeah, like if you want to switch decks, you, you can't. But I think we all had a playstyle we liked, and we all ended up with the right. Group yeah, right. We bought a, a, a booster box is eighty bucks for right. Warhammer, right? And split so we, four people, it's 20, twenty bucks to get a, a stack of cards, literally this big, for one booster box, just for my faction. Yeah. Take the extra cards, you know, sell them off. And that game has an app, too, where you can scan the cards in and play the digital version with all the which physical cards yet, on. But yeah, which Coming is out soon. Um, so that's, yeah, this has definitely been the year of the CCG, um, for sure. And so far, it seems like they're getting played. So I was just telling these guys as we were coming home, like, we should do some more, like, we should do some segments on, like, the card game of the week that we're playing right now and kind of what stands out about that. Chris kind of gave us a good idea yeah. at UFS. I'd like to do something with Brian. We can talk about the Final Fantasy game. Mm -hmm. So far, it's just been you and I playing that. But yeah. for that one, the theme is really appealing to me. But again, it still does something unique from, you know, Warhammer and the other games. So we should have a UFS tournament. We should. Yeah. Like, you got Mega Man. You got Street Fighter. We got Cowboy Bebop stuff. We got Mortal Kombat. It's going to be crazy. You got to climb the tower like yeah, Mortal Kombat. So good. One of the biggest games, I think you should probably talk about it because you're the one who ended up making the purchase. But we got an early demo of the Reckoners. Um, Friday, or sorry, Friday, Reckoners. Wednesday night when we first flew in. Uh, we did a little bit of a video on it too again. Yeah. Uh, you can see that one as well in the description. But. The Reckoners, you basically, you pick a character, the character's got some unique powers or abilities, and they, it's it's all about dice rolling and locking in dice and using them for, you know, executing certain actions. Each character has, you know, part of the dice is better for them, so they have more sides to roll, so they're just maybe better at attacking, maybe better at researching. It's cooperative, by the way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. It's kind of like a so, superhero game, but your characters aren't actually superheroes based on the, no. the Brandon Sanderson novels. Yeah. You're actually regular people fighting against There's like, one like villains. major superhero, and then there's a bunch of... Mainly what you do is try to control him, and then fight or try to defeat minor supervillains. I guess just minor villains. Yeah. But it's all with... It, it's pretty awesome because you, you work as a team because you can't just take down stuff on your own. You have, it's a lot of coordination to go, okay, you're good at researching, so we need a couple of you to take this guy down because research is actually considered like an armor. So I, as atta attacking, I can't actually hurt this guy until someone uses yeah. research to get rid of that. The, the, so just people so, will, Sorry, just to cut in, to, to explain the theme a little bit, it's you're, you're researching their weak spot. So like if you're fighting a villain, you yeah, don't right. know his weak spot, you can't kill him. You have to do the research to find his weak spot. That makes him vulnerable. Now you can actually kill him. Yeah. Sorry, you can go. No, like, like, that's how that. That's how that works. That's why I like that. But yeah, it just it allows everybody to have their own niche because there's a lot of other stuff where some people don't even fight or research villains at all. They're there to wipe out small minions, and or like get tons of money for people or mm -hmm. tons of like yeah. those. There's another thing called yeah, you, plan. Got, you got some money it's, for sure. Yeah, it's the and it that, allows yeah. for some awesome gameplay. You can see the video that you know we link for that. But it's just playing a little bit. My favorite type of game is co-op. I'm not a big competitive kind of player, so I love the co-op games. Mm -hmm. Just playing part of this, I had a ton of fun, and I ended up par purchasing it. So we did a ton of game playing while we were there, and one big game that we were planning on since we had kind of thought about going to Gen Con was Ultimate Werewolf Legacy. Oh, you forgot, you forgot <laughs> about it? Yeah, just like guys are trying to bring it. Oh! oh! It's We're trying to get all the games it's here. Right here. Like, Can you see it? Yeah, it's, it's somewhere <laughs> in here. Yeah. Look for it. Keep looking. <laughs> that that was, we had figured we have seven, but like between our roommates, between us and Jim, there was six of us. And, and then we had other. Shane and Ethan who were kind of there too. Like yeah. usually that means eight. So you need minimum nine to play Werewolf Legacy. And yeah. like, we were a little ambitious about that, and we're like, "Oh, we could totally get nine people every night, no problem." Yeah. Well, the problem so was hard. Our group of six, we didn't really have plans, but everyone else had other yeah, plans. Yeah, that's so true. So there was 
there's some times where two people will be gone doing something else, and other people will be gone. So. <sighs> Dude, Late that dinners. was... We did get to play it. Chris, you got to narrate, so you though. should definitely talk about right, it. But so, I will say it's one of the... It was one of the good... One of the better experiences of the con. I thought it was really fun that night. We yeah, played. yeah we, we were able to play four uh, scenarios. Including the intro, yeah. Right, so, so we got through the, the first act. Uh, I think everybody had a great time. It, it feels just like Werewolf. Mm -hmm. um, but you you do get a assigned to a family, and you get to roll your character forward through the story, and that's all I'm going to tell you. Yeah. But <laughs> it's great. Uh, lying to your friends is awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, man. man, there were some good ones. And I always love watching. It's, it's almost as fun as playing, if not more fun. Uh, just because you know what's going on and no one else does, yeah. and you can see people, and you're like, "That was so obvious," but like, only to you it was noticed. Obvious. Yeah, God, that there were some great play. I can't, I can't remember them all now. Uh, but that, that again, that was that really stood out in my mind. That was a really fun night. Yeah. Yeah. The four games we had, we had our friend Julian come and join us for a couple of games, mm -hmm. and uh, we had we had one game where it was so ridiculous. I think it was like, why well, I can't explain the mechanics because I'm going to spoil it. But anyway, yeah, it's the same as the normal game. Something. Well, this was once right. we had some of the other mechanisms kind of yeah. mixed in with the families and stuff, and uh, something happened, and the game ended instantly. Somebody's just like, I have some information and the ability <laughs> to just end this game right now, and everybody went, what? And <laughs> but it only worked because we believed. It. We had like, yeah, it was like such a perfect thing. It was it was so great. It was like one of those super memorable moments. From that have game. you ever played Pandemic Legacy and you? got excited when a rule changed and it really shook th uh, things up, you will like this version of a Legacy game. It's just really a simple as that. Nine, people. nine to if you, 16 people. Nine, people nine friends people. that just yeah. happen to have so, like I mean, it's perfect a few for hours. Party, right? like, <laughs> yeah. It's perfect for a party. People don't really need to be it's not that heavy, complicated, heavy gamers though. at all. Right? One, no. one person needs to run the game. You need yes. to have the narrator so like that person needs to know it. Oh, but everybody else, it's not that deep of a game. Like, this, so you can just teach it quick. This is a Thanksgiving game. You buy this, and you could take this to Thanksgiving and blow everybody's mind. I've driven my family crazy with Thanksgiving games, so they want they want nothing to do with the game. <laughs> Speaking of family games, Azul, my favorite game of the whole convention. Oh, oh really? Was it really up there? Your favorite game? It, this is my favorite game of the whole convention. Wow, yeah. I had no idea. That's awesome. Um, let me just move out of the way. Yeah, no, I'm just pointing at Brian. This yeah, right my my favorite. The, the, the camera's on the other side, guys. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's. It's simple to learn. It's deep enough that you can keep playing without getting bored, and your family will love it, and it's easy to set up. It's and... perfectly randomized every time. Right, mm -hmm. and I think we played play more than that than anything else. Anything else. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's, it's the easiest thing to set up. Yeah. It takes seconds to set up. It's, exactly. It takes no, seconds to teach the rules, so, so that's like part that. of the reason, but yeah. And there's a difficulty... And okay. there's a, a difficulty jump too. So if you right. have a bunch of people that have already played, you can step it up a notch. Right. It, it's it, it is hours and hours of fun of a game that you can get you can get done with in you, 30, 30 to forty five minutes. I want to be clear. It's not my favorite game, right? Okay. I just think it's the best one because it fits such a large. Um, different sets of groups. You can yeah, play with your family, you can play with your friends, you can play it quick. And it's very, it's very accessible. I think it's a, I think it's a great game. It's really like, pretty and like tactile and like anyone can just enjoy it. Just even if you don't know what you're really doing at all, you're just like, mm -hmm. oh, this is cool, and like, it's still fun. Yeah. It's a no-brainer pickup if you are into games, if you love games, or if you want to get people that aren't into games into games. This is a really good starter. It's like absolutely, it's just a puzzle. Yeah. It's solve the puzzle, right? It's it's really fun. Feels uh, a lot play. like uh, Splendor. Yep. Same. Yep. Not same mechanics, but same feel. Yeah. It's a game kind of like, uh, I would attribute to kind of like, it's not close to a card game in any way, but those simple games where you just can play and play and play, win, lose, you're like, oh, that was fun, let me just start again. again. Yeah. I don't want to say it mindless, but it's you learn the rules really quick, and between the pieces, the mechanics, and just playing with people, it doesn't matter if you lose or win, it's... It's just fun to try and it's, fall just to match things up and yeah. see what you can do. And you just keep playing it over and over yeah. again. I just felt the same yeah. each time. Well, yeah, played it, it a bunch. Yeah, it, it's never the exact same though. That's why it doesn't get boring because it's, it's everything's randomized, the tiles and everything. So it's going to be different outcome every time, no matter no matter what you do. It's just really fun. So you guys also you guys also played Root. Um, oh, that's great. We did. Uh, we did another video for that. Where we Brian about it. It. Brian's giving us the hairy <laughs> eyeball over here because he did not have a good experience either time because it was. <laughs> 
You, you just both, I think both times you picked. We don't, we, need to go deep, game. we don't need to go deep into it. I but. love the game. You uh, guys awesome. made a very ambitious choice. You'll notice that I sort of backed out of that one very casually. Not because I didn't think the game looked amazing, but because you're like, let's learn six player root at a convention after yeah. we've been walking around for half the day. I was like, it's I'm going to do something else in my four hours. Let's all <laughs> learn our own individual game and then no. put them together. Nope, and... nope, nope, nope. I'm, so, I'm glad I backed out, but you guys actually ended up doing it. Yeah, it was awesome. Root was, it. You know, what they're saying is because I, I had two partially bad experiences with it. <laughs> I didn't know how to play the first time. Like the character I read, Literally I played it wrong. Yeah. The second time was a lot more rugged, <laughs> so I had a lot less fun. The game itself is cool. It's yeah. yeah. It, I don't. Just had a bad these guys <laughs> might be able to reference it to another game, but it, it, it's the as the overall game. Each of your characters is its own mini game. The game itself, it, it is cool. It, it, it between six players, it was very very long, especially trying to learn it. Super long. That was and brave, it, man. You got If you brave. if you learn how to play that the race well, yeah. you can. Then you 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 can do well in the game. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, that's why I, I personally got frustrated because I, I there were some things I did wrong, and then yeah, after you know two three hours, you're like, yeah, screwing uh, up in a game for the first time for three hours. Right. I'd be Overall, the, the the game is unique, and it was it was yeah. cool. It's super it was cool. Very cool. Every time we played it, I was like, I want to play again, but try that character because it's going to be completely mm -hmm. different. And like, every time we played it too, I learned more strategies. I'm like, oh, I should have done this completely. Like, it should have branched off in a different way and done a different thing. I played Pokemon Go. You did uh, play Pokemon you guys Go. I played so much Pokemon Go. <laughs> I kept taking videos of you guys playing, and I'm playing them right now for everyone just to make fun of how much you guys play Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> I so wish I was still into that game, and I can't get excited. About I couldn't but play then, any videos because I was playing Pokemon Go. When we got else. back, like Jeremy sent the group text a big a picture of like Chris hasn't logged on in four days, and Jeremy's like, "Dude, you okay?" <laughs> <laughs> Like, he's like, I played too much Pokemon. I don't even want a Pokemon. He hurt, he hurt his Pokemon. I do. Oh, it's so good. I'm like, really, Chris, you okay? He's like the simplest. You all right? Oh, I had noticed great. his cat caught Pokemon hadn't changed. In a that was few exactly days, what he was said. Like, oh yeah. God. God, that's funny. Uh, all right, so some other games I want to talk about we picked up that I'm excited to get to. Uh, one of them was Newspeak. They had sample copies that were available, but they didn't have anything for sale. It's going to be going to Kickstarter. But Newspeak really got me excited uh, because it has it's it, the concept of it is uh, like a dystopian future where everybody has essentially an alternate reality being presented in front of their eyes. I'm not going to get the theme perfect, uh, but basically what you have to do as a group is there are some over like overseer type roles. I'm getting the terminology wrong, but there's overseer type roles, and then there are sort of uh, dissidents that like are trying to change their fate, trying to let everybody know about how like this this bleak future where they actually live and trying to remove the wool from everybody's eyes. So. What you have to do is you have this whole secret language. You have cue cards uh, that kind of have different languages and different ways that you can speak to each other. So you have to speak out loud and talk amongst your uh, your fellow dissidents, but the overseers are listening and they're using a chart to try and figure out which language you're speaking. And so what uh, essentially what location you're trying to decide to agree to go to and hack. Because once you all, once the dissidents go to a location together, they hack that location, it gets turned over, and then the real bleak world is revealed on that side. And you have to do that to a certain number of locations to win the game. Uh, so it, it seems super interesting. I love the theme. I love the concept of it. I love that it's kind of like a hidden role game. I'm it's very much role. like, what, what was it called? Spyfall, is it? Uh, yeah, kind of like Spyfall yeah, type thing, yeah. It but seemed like, like it had Spyfall. A lot more depth to it. Yeah. Like Spyfall is very light. This yeah. seems like a lot more deep. Very brief overview of what the game is, but it's really cool. Uh, we meant to get to it at the at the convention, but uh, the sample copies didn't have the rules, and I still have to email the, the publisher there and see if they can give us some some of the latest rules to try it out. But looked um, fun. Yeah, definitely. Definitely looks cool. Um, another game we played was Most Wanted on the first night. I forgot to mention that. Um, we had I, I got that from Origins, but we played them on the first night. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, we played the basic game. It was sort of like, sort of uses poker hands, and in the more complex versions of the game you play, the better the poker hand, like the more like yeah, poker it is. It's just, right? it's just what, pairs, three of a kind, and, and four of a kind, and the standard, and then you can add like flush and straight or whatever. So yeah, most of all, basically everybody takes a turn and you get to choose what action you want to take. And the locations, and, right? And yeah, the action or location you go to rob, like you rob the bank, you rob the stagecoach. And the bigger the, the robbery, the more reward, but the higher the risk, because you had to play more cards and have a better hand to win. So um, it was cool. Yeah, the risk reward starts to be like the more notoriety you gain from doing certain things, yeah, the, the more, more money you have to pay on bail if you get caught. Yeah, or so it was like a slight balance of yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, that was fun. That was a good game. I yeah, kind I thought, of yeah, I don't know where it was fun. I thought it was light, um, quick, and a fun little. It goes up to like eight people too. So again, yeah. like 
I don't remember this game at all. I don't think you played really? a game. No, we were just about to start it, and you were so tired that you went, yeah, I'm going to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, great. That was the first day, so you were completely wiped out. So, yeah, you went, you went to bed. I swear to God, I don't remember this at <laughs> no. all. I, like, taught the game, you and then you just went to bed. You literally threw down your hand and, like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's so funny. That's what happened. What are you guys talking about? When did this happen? You're just making stuff up. there, dude. <laughs> one of the other games I picked up was Detective. I was uh, I was excited to try this one, and I, I was putting it off because I know that I've heard it's two to three hours, but I think every I think we will all love it. I'm still excited to play yeah, it together. I, play it. Yeah. I think it's going to be great. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Uh, and I'm super excited to play, but I was at the convention and I, they had mentioned like, Hey, we have a convention specific scenario. It's an hour and a half. We know Gen Con's harsh. Like no one wants to play for three hours at a convention. I was like, wow, you sold. I'll buy right now. Like, give me it. Um, I was going to wait till I got home, get it for a little bit cheaper or whatever. But, uh, I was like, well, I want it now. I want to play with my friends while we're all here and stuff. And, but now I'm glad I didn't anyway, cause it's like sold out everywhere or whatever, but. Uh, yeah, so I got to like I pulled up the convention scenario, and unfortunately, it was it was just a PDF with like links to like print out all the cards. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, uh, let's play this when we get home, guys. So I put that one away. <laughs> so we didn't get a chance to play Detective, but I'm really looking forward to that one. That's one that I mean, another one that we brought home that we haven't played yet. Yeah, the last two uh, I picked up um, Remnants and uh, um, Hail Hydra. So Hail Hydra is like a hidden role game. We didn't get to play it yet, but um, I don't have any hidden role games myself, so I figured I'd add one to my collection. Good I like theme. Marvel anyway. Um, and the production quality is really awesome. The box and, and all that stuff. Is yeah, that's cool. right. You showed me. That was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Remnants, me and Isaac just played demo. It's Fireside Games, which I already have a couple of games from them. So um, yeah, we stopped by and just did a demo. And the demo person was really great. And we, we enjoyed the game. So I picked it up. Um, and Sle- it. Sleeper hit for me. <laughs> like I, I love the theming of it. And yeah. the gameplay played right into the theme of the game of like scarcity yes. plus what, like what battling it what's out the, what's the deal like it's you like, guys gave me a quick it's like a mad max universe like the world is okay. gone to crap and you're building your own um each player is competitive but you don't like fight each other you're just sur- trying to survive separately mm. so you build your your fortification as well as you can and then there's three fights throughout the game there's like a level one a level two and then a boss so you have to like fortify yourself to survive the fight or beat and kill the, the enemy that shows up. Um, so you're competing in the fact that like you're, tr- you're all fighting for the same resources and the same items. Um, but you're not like, you don't get, you never get to attack each other or anything like that. Okay. So um, I, I, it's kind of like the best competition, competitive type game, I think for myself at least. <laughs> for us, because just, you're not really fighting against anybody yeah. else. You're not we, like, we always do that anyway in games. So I think that's part of what happened in root too, is yeah. <laughs> we were all just playing our own game. We weren't attacking each other. Like, well, if I don't attack him, he's not going to attack me. So, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. And there's like, I like there's one Jump phase. Day, yeah. they, it's like a live rolling dice rolling no. time. So it's like well, all the other games are, you know, take your time, but there's one phase where you have to all roll your dice as quick as you can make the certain matches to scavenge with resources. Then once, the three other players have scavenged their last resource. The fourth player is locked out. So it's kind of like a race to make sure you get what you need, which hmm. is cool. That was unique to I'm the game. That. that was kind of cool. Yeah. Because in the beginning, it didn't matter. You like Unless you wanted the bonus, you yeah. could just you know do your rolls. And you know the first three people to go out of the four would get the bonus. But later in the game, and you start ripping resources out, yeah. and you can't get certain things anymore, yeah, no that's when it's like, now need I need to frantically it. get what I need. Because if yeah. they, Chris, you had a bunch of like uh, you had a good engine going, like you had a bunch yeah. of cards that enabled you to get free resources. Yeah, we didn't. But for some people that didn't, it's like I have to have metal right now, kind of thing. Yeah. So that that was unique. It was fun because that was like the everything else was casual, and that was the frantic part. That was where you're like trying to compete mm-hmm. with the other person. I should say there was a lot of other games we were interested in picking up. Like Nyctophobia was a really big yeah, one. I want to make sure you mentioned. But that, that line was enormous, and I was not interested in standing they it sold just out to get up quickly. to the front and then have them say. We don't have any so we didn't bother but chris got in line and picked up the mine for me one day which is great yep. and uh yeah that was the whole last night of the convention we, we did a video for that as well i highly recommend you check that out not because i want to plug my own stuff but just because it was amazing and these it's these three silly. guys Good plus fun. jim uh won a four-player game they got all the way to level eight and one played 32 cards in a row 
with no lives lost no, and no like no yeah, no yeah no no yeah. no ninja, ninja stars Star. like they did it and you like, know it's amazing. amazing that's because we ran out of lives and ran out of ninja stars sure so yeah it was, it was, it was, it was, was, was amazing all of our hearts were gone God, it was so good beat a sweat and we we're yeah. like i packed my bags okay. i come downstairs and i was like Hey guys, you're on level eight. Wow, that's amazing. I'm gonna film you guys losing now, so we'll have something to talk about. <laughs> yeah. And then you won. Yeah, and it was it was mind blowing. I would say it's not the type of game I would play with people that you've met for the first time. Uh -huh. um, it, it's hard. it it would be very very hard to play that way. This is a game to break out in front of like you know old friends or yeah. like family or something like that. Like okay. hey, we all need to be quiet for a little while. We're gonna play like a quiet game and then just like blow their minds uh with with yeah. the like oh. <laughs> uh, become one be and player. become one uh <laughs> oh, I, well, I, think, I get it yeah uh i love you guys the and if uh, and if you're and you talk with your hands a lot like i do it's it becomes you know <laughs> oh you're 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 doing it wrong no, no it's totally no, fine no, no it's it's fine. No, I, I talk with my hands. I was a little nervous when we put that video out first. I was like, people are going to say, oh, you guys cheated. You were communicating. But, like, I'm pretty confident in saying you guys played that right. And yeah. Isaac was using a little bit more hand gestures than I would have expected. Or I, I probably would have been it's uncomfortable like with that. Counting, but there's right. nothing about his hand gestures at any point gave away anything about any of the numbers the in his cards. hands. Right. I, so so go away. Just leave me alone. Like, it was a perfect game. <laughs> right? Damn it. It was so good. I played directly with Isaac, with Chris, with Jim. And doing this... All that told me was, hey, don't put anything down right now. Which and is exactly the same thing as you lurching forward like this, yeah, which yeah, is right, perfectly right. allowed. You're, you're supposed to go slap the table, and then it's like, it, it readies. Everyone stops, right. resets, because you think, oh, we don't want anyone to just throw something down out of the blue. Yeah. And that's all this was. That didn't tell me anything. I'm like, I yeah. still don't know what to do. <laughs> if, he yeah. had, if we had established you know? a language that said, like, I have two more than that, or something like that. That's stupid, and you're cheating. But I yeah, did it's not, not like I he think. was like pointing four times to right. indicate the number. Yeah, no, four. It, no, there's no language. We didn't steps. create. We didn't create a secret language. No, <laughs> none of us know ASL. It like too this not, to do it anyway. This is not yeah. the bare minimum. I knew when <laughs> two cards went out, nine. we both have something that we think is the next card. Yeah, and that's when it got hard. The absolute hardest thing I remember is when everybody had a hand of high cards and like the. Two or ten goes down, and everybody just goes. Oh, and you're like, yeah, dude. who's gonna go? And the lowest next card is like seventy. Yeah. Nobody like you don't want to play that from a ten to a seventy. <laughs> it's so hard to play. And then when you yeah. do it, and everyone goes. Whew. You know, it's it, that's what made it really fun. But there was like some stressful moments, stressful moments in a card game where it's just putting cards down. It's silent. It was silent it was fun. It's we so had some fun. Yeah. yeah. There's no other way to put it. Intimate. It's intimate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me, me and him played um, just two player for a while, and it was like, all right, we need to take a break. Like, yeah, I'm staring at this one guy for like. <laughs> at least an hour I know and you half. just feel awkward almost like but staring. At you go out and smoke like you need a cigarette after that. <laughs> we played a lot. We can do better <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah. Man, we played a lot. We did. we did. Like by the end of the night, you were like, oh hey, we it was beat it. You're like. Oh, it was like really late at night. Like early early morning. Our, yeah, our plane was leaving at our plane left at like five thirty in the morning, and we were up playing until like one or two. Yeah, yeah. it was a bad idea. Really no, it was a great idea. We have a great group that can play that we play games with, like all of yeah. us. No, and right. we have. <laughs> sorry, sorry, we're all right. And you can go from the most complex games that we play all the way down to something simple like that. And you can, like, even watching the video, you can see how animated and how much fun we had. Even to the very end when everyone just explodes screaming because we won. Yeah. Yeah. Probably woke a lot of people up because it was late when it's we okay. yelled. Yeah. But it, it's just, it's awesome to be able to just grab any kind of game like that and just show how much fun you can have with it. I think this is a good thing to, I wish, this is a great way to explain things to, like, my coworkers. Like, when they come back, where you been for, like, four days? Like, why do you have pneumonia? And, like, wait, what happened to you? I thought you went to, like, a board game thing. Yeah. And it's like, how do I explain to someone, like, I like this, I love games. Like, this is what games are. It's like, games are, like, that social interaction and, like, that just exercising different parts of your brain and, like, just learning yeah. new things and, you know, the art and the components and all that stuff mixed together and just create such great experiences, like, which is why, as much as Gen Con is a crazy whirlwind of a convention and there's a million things going on, it's super exhausting. I don't think I ever want to skip it because it's just... Oh, it just it all oh, it just feels so it's so exciting. Like the whole thing is so exciting. All the games we play, it's like it's the whole experience of that. It's just yeah. 
All right, so our battery died there for a second, so we're back with you. Now we're actually going to say goodbye properly. <laughs> <laughs> that was our long Gen Con recap. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we uh, we hope you'll come back and join us again soon where we talk about more of these games in a little more detail. Some of those like CCGs we're going to dive into. We're going to dive into certainly a good portion of these games, at least give like some uh, more in-depth talk about them and, and show off the components and stuff. So we hope you'll join us. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you next time.